Hey everyone, Adam Metro Media here, and in this video, we're gonna be making our very own book lights for under $7. If you've never heard of a book light, it is a style of light, not an actual light itself. So what we do is we create this thing that's kind of shaped like an open book and we bounce light off one side of it, which is a reflector, and we bounce it through the other side of it, which is a diffusion panel. It's as simple as that. And this is something that I get requests for pretty often in the comments on my videos is, hey, could you make a a book light and this is not something that I ever really use like an actual book light when I'm on shoots or my my own freelance projects I do use a similar style where I bounce and reflect and diffuse a lot of light for product shots and stuff like that that I do in my studio but not for um, you know freelance projects where I'm out interviewing people somewhere um, out in public. It's kind of a lot of setup. There's a lot of things that, to mess with, and I just don't use them. However, um, I thought I would give this a stab and see if I can make a very inexpensive book light, um, you know, for all of us DIYers out there. And one of the things that uh, I want to say from the start is that this is probably one of the cheaper, flimsier DIY projects that. Um, I've ever done. It's not something that I would take out on a professional shoot or use in front of clients. It's not something that's going to handle a lot of wear and tear. However, it is dirt cheap and it is so simple to make. And we're going to go ahead and get started right now. Materials that you're going to need are a four foot by four foot sheet of insulation panel, a tape measure or a ruler, a knife for cutting, a pencil or marker to mark with, a thin white material for diffusion. In this case, I'm using a white plastic tablecloth that I found at the dollar store. And then you're gonna want some gaffer's tape and a stapler. So you're likely gonna get your panel as a four foot by eight foot panel from a big box home improvement store. And these are just those reflective insulation panels that are silver on one side and white on the other. We have an entire video on turning them into reflectors that I'm gonna link below or somewhere above me. You might need to cut your panel into two four foot by four foot squares to transport it. I actually bring my tape measure to the store with me and do that in the parking lot like some sort of weirdo, but they're easier to transport when they are in two four foot by four foot squares rather than in one large four foot by eight foot panel. If you didn't cut the panel in half to transport it home, your first step is gonna to be to cut that larger panel in half so that you have two of these identical four foot by four foot squares. Set one aside, we're only gonna need one for this entire project. Now we wanna cut the middle out, leaving about two inches around every edge. I used a tape measure and marked two inches in from each side, and then I used a large flat level as a straight edge to mark a straight line, and I did this for all four sides. When you're done, you should have a big square marked in the middle of your panel. Now go ahead and cut that out and do it carefully. Um, I found that when cutting these things, it makes a big difference if you have a very sharp knife, number one, and two, go in short, shallow strokes rather than trying to hack your way all the way through it. The smaller square that we just cut out of the middle is going to be the reflector part of our book light. So what we wanna do is tape the edges of those up using a few pieces of gaffer's tape so that there's no insulation kind of spilling out and falling around everywhere. It makes it a lot easier to hold on your hands too so that you're not getting weird little like, you know, fiber insulation cuts all over your fingers when you're holding one of these things. Now go ahead and stretch your fabric over the hole we cut in the larger panel. Then you either wanna tape it or staple it in place like I did. If you cut and tape it, what you'll wanna do is make sure that you tape up the edges of this panel too. What I did is so that I didn't have to tape this second panel, I stretched that fabric over the edge and top and bottom of this piece and stapled it in place. That way it provided its own kind of, you know, soft edge protection piece. To use this, you're just gonna to wanna to set it up so that your light is bouncing off the reflector and then through the diffusion panel. And your diffusion panel and your reflector should almost be touching at one of the corners. Again, if you looked at this from the top, it's gonna to look like an open book that's like sitting there on a table. I somehow don't have any books in front of me to illustrate this if you've never seen a book before, but trust me, it's gonna look like a book. So you might need some additional stands and clamps to get this going, that's totally fine. I find that two stands and some clamps work to hold the diffusion panel up, and then one stand and another clamp work to hold the reflector up. And then of course you're gonna need one to have your light on. 
So there you go. You should have your very own book light that you can use on your projects. And hey, guess what? You spent less than $7 on this thing. So do you have and use book lights? If so, let us know in the comments section below. If you want to at me or slide into my DMs, options for those are down below as well. So is that very, very enticing subscribe button. As always, thank you for taking the time to watch this video and we will see you next time.